I'm sorry I uh, didn't destroy your uh, heating system. It was uh, my shadow. Let's build together a uh, heating system. So first we need the boiler because the boiler actually heat the heating agent which passes by through the radiators. Then we obviously need the pipes and the valves to allow us to isolate the pipes. Now, as you will see here, we have two branches and also we have a pressure release valve. These valves you see now with the red arrows meant to isolate the systems in case we have to do some maintenance. They have a number on it so we can identify them. The pressure release valve, it is there to protect against high pressure. This one, it is three bars. The circulating pump help us to move the heating agent through the system. And the pressurization unit helps us to maintain the pressure into the system. Inside the pressurization unit, we have the water tank, the floating valve, the main provide the water to the floating valve, and the overflow protect us against uh, the flood in case the tank fills up. If the drain is not maintained, we can flood the premises. Pressurization unit have two pumps, a one-way valve, and a probe, which controls the pressure and send the impulse to a printed circuit board inside the pressurization unit control box. We connect the pressurization to the heating system and we install the bypass that help us to fill the system if the pressurization unit will be damaged. The pressure vessel and the extra PRV, it is meant to control the pressure in case the pressure vessel failure. Two valves are installed to help us to replace the pump without draining the entire system. So we install the right hand side branch, the radiators, and now we put the air eliminators and finally the air handling unit. We also fitted the bypass valves and the flow regulators to make sure the heating agent is equally distributed to the system. So system is ready to go. If this is so easy, why you didn't become a HVAC yourself? Well, probably it's too easy for me. A responsible HVAC engineer will always think with his heart, not with his mind. And this is the truth. When I was apprentice, I would ask, why do I need so many manometers in one system? One is not enough. Then I learned about gravitation, how the gravitation act against the water because the water has got uh, mass and so on. Then uh, let's see how this system is working and uh, how can we make it better. This is a simple conversation. I don't pretend to be a guru of the HVAC. I'm sharing with you what I learned through my experience. So. Don't rush on uh, criticizing, but if you'll find a better way and then if you can send me a message in which you will uh, explain to me why I did wrong, I would mind. Every time I make a video, I think I'm making the video for myself. I don't want any advertising, neither I want any money from YouTube. I just want to share with my fellow SageVac engineer what I'm getting through while working for different companies and uh, sharing the experience. I think it is one of the nicer things uh, you can do. Now let's begin. <clears throat> As you see here in this project, I just uh, fitted a kind of drain valve, purge valve, which uh, allows me to take the air out of the system when I'm filling the system for the first time. You will see it is a red arrow uh, to the bottom. That is very important for me because I feel the system faster than using any other option. So uh, 
this will be always part of my design. Before to put water into the installation, I always uh, check the pressure onto the pressurization vessel. And if the pressure is wrong, I'm pressurizing the system myself. I just want to make sure that I will provide for the system the right elasticity to have um, the smallest possible variation in pressure when the, the heat increases and decreases as per uh, building demand. If the system pass all the tests, the strength and the working pressure test, then I will open all the valves uh, with the exception of uh, the bypass that you can see it on the pressurization unit. Of course, people will ask me uh, later on why I'm using the bypass and I'm not using the pressurization unit directly to fill the system. I have an answer for that too. I don't want to use the pumps excessively. And uh, while I'm uh, filling the installation, I think uh, using the main uh, cold water system and the pressure available onto the system, it is uh, okay for the first filling. I have another very thorough visual inspection and then I will uh, fill normally the system with uh, water. So I will open uh, the bypass, both valves, allowing the water to go from the main uh, directly into the system. And uh, when I'll open the purge valve, then the water will close the circuit. When the water will come out from the purge valve, then uh, it is clear that the system it is full of water. Also, you will see on the gauges that they will have a different values, the one which are to the bottom will be different than the ones which will be maybe at the second floor, fifth, tenth floor, whatever. We all know that gravitation act on the water and that will affect the manometer reading. I didn't put values on the manometers because every installation got its own volume, its own height and uh, this is for the technician to calculate. We all know that for every 10 meters we gain a bar and uh, that will uh, be the reference points for you when uh, you fit the manometer to create reference points for uh, further maintenance when you install a HVAC equipment. If you look to these gadgets, the gauges that sit on the ground show slightly more pressure than the one which uh, sits on the top. I put them this in purpose to give you a kind of example. What uh, would you expect when the pumps are not running? Uh, once I decided that the system filled up and uh, um, it is uh, full with uh, water, I will uh, turn off the bypass uh, valves and I will uh, pass the duty to the pressurization unit. Once I'll turn on the pressurization unit, I will be able to see on the pressurization unit display uh, the pressure that I have on the installation at that point. And uh, then the pressurization unit will decide if it needs slightly more pressure. At this stage, the pumps will not be abused because the quantity of uh, water required to achieve the pressure will uh, be uh, not much and the pumps do not have to run for extended, extended period of times. Once the pressurization unit uh, sets the pressure correct into the system, it will start the heating agent circulating pump. And then the pressurization unit will push a little bit more water into the system to um, cover the difference between uh, the return when the pumps are not running with the return when the pumps are running. 
So um, that will be the true pressure readings onto the pressurization unit display. Now you can see the uh, manometers moving. Uh, the flow side of the pump goes a little bit higher while the return gets lower. Then the pressurization will compensate to reach uh, the pressure that he was set up. And this is the pressure I was talking about before, because when the pump is not working, the pressure balances, which means the return uh, pressure will grow up a little bit. And when the pump will start, the return pressure will lower its value. The pressurization unit finishes job. He balanced the system. However, as you can see on this image, I set the pressurization unit high pressure limit below the pressure release valve set point. So the PRV, it is about two bars, while the pressurization unit is stopped. It's set up to stop the boiler at uh, 1.8 bars. Why I'm doing this? I'm doing this because I want to use the PRV as a last barrier in case of a high pressure issue. While the heating pump is running, I think in installation you'll always have here and there small uh, pockets of air which will be cleared and the air eliminators will be uh, active most of the time. So the pressurization unit will push water in the system to compensate the volume loss by uh, the air elimination. So you don't have to worry for the first day if the pumps will run a little bit excessively until the air will be clear from the installation. After you finish your installation, just don't rush to start the heating immediately. Just circulate for a while the heating agent through the system, observe potential faults, check the air eliminators, check the gauges, check the leaks, and after you make sure that everything is okay, then uh, start the boiler and slowly uh, start to heat the heating agent. So you start the boiler and the system starts to heat up. As you will see, the actuator starts working and uh, it controls the flow through the radiators. I would set this actuator to maximum to make sure that the flow is going freely through the radiators and through the AHU to make sure that all the pockets will be circulated through the system to be eliminated by the air eliminators. Meantime, the pressurization unit will uh, compensate all the loss uh, governed by the air elimination. As the temperature increases, the heating agent is increasing its volume as well. That's why we have a pressure vessel to take that volume. So taking the volume, the pressure will remain constant. Well, it will not remain constant, but the pressure variation will be reduced as much as possible. So this is the only way to keep the pressure within the very narrow bandwidth. Now, you know, when you will uh, pressurize the system, you will uh, calculate the volume of the installation and the pressure vessel capacity to make sure that the pressure will be in between some parameters set by you when you design the installation. As you can see, the black uh, rubber bellow inside the pressure vessel shrunk because of the temperature. Now, uh, because the temperature decreased a little bit, uh, he expands, so the um, contraction and expansion of that rubber bellow will uh, play with the volume, but it will keep the pressure uh, constant or within very narrow bandwidth. That's the role of the pressure vessel. So we eliminate or minimize as much as possible the pressure variation into the system. If you follow the red arrow, here are some hints where you should look on the installation. You have to check the pressurization unit 
Have a look at the pressure vessel. If it is uh, correctly pressurized, we have to disconnect it for the system and to check it. Then we have to check the actuator. Sometimes they corrode it and they're losing water all the time. You wouldn't know you have the leak if they go straight into one drain. Million question on your head. You wouldn't know where to turn. Then you have to look to the flow switch sometime to see if you have the right flow into the system, not to have blockages. That's why the temperature can over increase and you can have all sorts of problems. So uh, a good engineer is not looking only to the boilers or use a set of screwdrivers. You have an overlook for the entire system. Watch the PRVs, watch the manometers if they're good. Every single part of the system play a very important role, either on a system investigation or on the system functionality. A bad design can lead to trouble. Look at the pressure vessel. The rubber bellow inside, if it's too much abused, it can uh, be damaged inside. Once you lose that rubber bellow, you lose system elasticity. And once you do that, the pressure can increase so much and if the pressure increase then the pressurization unit will stop the boilers if you reach the pressure limit so now the high pressure limit uh, force the pressurization unit to turn off the boiler for the safety reasons and now uh, the entire building will uh, freeze because uh, a simple fault like a pressure vessel rubber bellow. The pressurization unit have the high limit set below the pressure release valve high limit. So it cut the boiler before the PRV to reach his high limit because you don't want to lose a heating agent from the system. Some people are using only water but some people we use, as an example, chillers or combined system, we're using glycol, which is very expensive. Plus, sometimes you use some substances to balance the heating agent, like in inhibitors, so we don't want to lose that one. That's why the pressurization unit will stop the system first. Unfortunately, some technicians are diabolic. They have a lot of knowledge, and their knowledge is equal with their laziness. Instead, to check the pressure vessels or the system they just happy to change the settings of the pressurization unit setting up the higher limit above the pressurization i'm sorry the pressure relief valve the prv and as you will see on this picture the prv is leaking a hot heating agent uh, into the drain and uh, just imagine what happened if that drain will uh, be blocked at one point. You will end up in a disaster. If you are unlucky enough and your drain is blocked, then uh, all the water eliminated from the system will go on the floor. And if you have a very important business like, uh, I don't know, computer business where the plugs are on the floor, or a data building center, all this stuff, then uh, all I can say you hit the jackpot. Anyway, thank you very much for watching my video and please, uh, if you want and you're kind enough, watch my the other videos, not with the intention so that you learn something, but you might find some of my mistakes and uh, you will send me messages and then you will correct me somehow because uh, the ultimate... Uh, things that you can gain in life, it's knowledge. If you think that one day we will all leave this planet and we will take nothing with us, you'll realize that uh, we've been here just in holiday. And uh, that's why I want to tell everybody um, about these videos I'm making, uh, not for money, uh, not for anything, but uh, I want to share with my colleagues some of my work experience and uh, I'm watching many people videos and I'm impressed about uh, how intelligent we are as human beings but we're not using our mind where we're supposed to. We uh, destroy the pure knowledge with uh, political ones 
and that's why in UK many technicians are suffering. What can I say? I wish you the best, and uh, from all my heart, uh, I wish everybody uh, good luck and easy jobs and not uh, bad acts in the middle of the night with water leaks and uh, impossible jobs to do and so on. Thank you very much. What is the point of spending millions looking for other planets when we don't know how to take care of our own?